I'm Alex Arena with Tuts Plus, and today I'm going to show you how to create a Retina Ready DMG installer bundle for your Mac application. So, first things first, why do you want to do this? After all, the Mac App Store is really a great option to distribute your application. But it's not for everyone. Applications that can't take advantage of sandboxing or other Apple imposed restrictions will need to find another route for distribution. And that's where the venerable DMG comes in. You've probably used one to install an application before, and at their core, DMGs are just disk image files. That means your DMG file will mount like any other volume. In addition, DMGs can be marked as read-only, which provides an extra level of control for the application developer. So now that you know exactly what a DMG is, and how it can be useful to you, let's get started. It shouldn't come as a surprise that we're going to need an application to distribute. As it so happens, I've got a great Hello World application sitting right here on my desktop. But beyond that, we're also going to want a background image for the DMG file. While not technically required, background images provide polish to your application and can be used to give some installation instructions. So let's make one. You'll want to fire up your image editor of choice. I'm partial to Pixelmator, but alternatives like Photoshop, GIMP, or Acorn will all do the trick. The image we're going to create could really be any size you'd like, but I'll choose 1200 by 750. If that sounds a bit too large, remember that this is going to be an image optimized for a retina display, so we're going to cut that in half for non-retina displays once we've created the image that we like. A light background like this simple gradient looks best, as text for your application file and the application's folder will be in the system's default that is, black. Next, I'll add some instructional text. I'm going for a friendly vibe here, so I'll choose Install Me by dragging to the Applications folder. With my instructional text in place, I'll add an arrow that will be between our Hello World application and the Applications folder. All right, great. Now all that's left to do is export. I'll export in PNG format and give it the name bg at 2x.png. This at 2x naming structure is the standard for retina images and it's going to be required in the next step. Before that though, I'm going to duplicate this image and reduce it in size by half. In Pixelmator, this is done by going to image and then image size. Next, I'll go back to File, and then Export, to save our non-retina background image. Since it is the non-retina version, I'm just going to name it bg.png. Now that our background image has been created, we can exit out of the image editor and head to the terminal. The terminal is located within the Utilities folder. Once there, we're going to need to navigate to the folder where our two background images were saved. This is done with the cd command, so I'll type cd desktop. As you can see, we're now working in the desktop folder. We're going to use the tiffutil command to merge the two background images into one multi-representational tiff image. So I'll type tiffutil hyphen cat hi dpi chck bg.png and then bg at 2x.png hyphen out bg.tiff and then of course enter to execute the command. I'll head back to my desktop and you can see that the TIFF file has been created. If I open it in preview, you can see that the tiffutil command has done its job, and we've now encapsulated our two images into a single retina-ready background. All right, so let's take a step back. Application, check. Retina-ready background, check. But it's not time for celebration, not just yet at least, as we still need to create the final file to be placed in our DMG image, the link to the applications folder. The link is really nothing special though, and it can be created just like any other alias. 
I'll head back to the Finder, and then to the Macintosh HD directory. Next, command click on the Applications folder and select Make Alias. When prompted for your administrator password, just enter it and press OK. With the alias created, I'll copy it to my desktop just to keep everything together in one place. And we can now, finally, move on to creating the disk image itself. We're going to take care of this using Disk Utility. As you can see, just like Terminal, Disk Utility is hidden away within the Utilities folder. Now that Disk Utility is up and running, let's get down to business. Head up to the menu bar, select File, New, and then New Blank Image. This dialog box is going to let us manage the particulars of creating our disk image. Set the file name to the name of the application. In my case, it's going to be Hello World. I'll do the same for the name of the disk image. Next, you'll need to choose a size for your disk image. From the drop-down, select Custom. This can be a rough guesstimate, but it's better to err on the side of caution. The alias and icon we created shouldn't take up more than 5 megabytes or so, and the Hello World application I created clocks in at about 2 megabytes. So I'll round up and set the size of the disk image to 10.5 megabytes and that just so happens to be the minimum size for a disk image created through Disk Utility. Obviously though, the size of your disk image will end up reflecting the size of your application. So, with the size tailored to your individual needs, press OK and we can move on to other options. We can leave format set to Mac OS Extended and encryption to None. Under Partition, select No Partition Map. Finally, we're going to leave the image format as read-write, but don't worry, in the final step, we'll take care of converting it to a read-only image. With those options locked in, press Create to create the disk image. We can now move out of Disk Utility and back into the Finder, where, as you can see, our Hello World disk image has been mounted. Since we have both read and write access to the disk, we're able to copy our application's alias, background image, and the application itself into the image. Now we've got all of the required files tucked away nicely in our disk image, but as you can see, it doesn't look like much. Let's change that. First, in the Finder toolbar, I'll change to Icon View. Next, I'll need to show some hidden files. While this can be done with a terminal command, I'm going to use the free utility Invisibly X. I've included a link to Invisibly X in the body of this tutorial, so don't worry about hunting it down yourself. So, with one click of a button, it's shown our hidden files and relaunched the finder so the change could take effect. As you can see, a bunch of previously hidden system files are now visible. While that's all well and good, the whole reason we did this in the first place was to hide the background image file. If you've been looking closely at what all these hidden files have in common, it might not come as a surprise to you that to hide our background image, we're going to need to add a period to the front of its name. I'll do that by selecting the file, pressing enter, adding that period, and then pressing enter again. The bad news here is that doing this has prompted the system to show us a lovely warning message. The good news though, is that that warning message is notifying us that we're about to accomplish exactly what we set out to do. So yup, just press OK. And just like that, our background file is now hidden. Now all we need to do is apply it. To do that, command click on any blank space in the disk images finder window and press show view options. Under background, choose picture and then drag in the .bg.tiff image file. Like magic, we've now got ourselves a background image. And while we're in Show View Options, let's check this box to make sure that the image always opens an icon view, and this one to default browsing to the same view. To make sure that the icons stay where we want them, choose None under both Arrange By and sort by. 
Finally, you can also adjust the size of the icons on your disk image by moving the slider like so. Alright, that all looks good. I'm now going to close out of the Show View Options window and head back to Invisibly X to rehide those hidden files. Again, you can manage hiding and unhiding files in the terminal, but as you can see, a tool like Invisibly X really makes the task quite simple. With the icons hidden, we can drag the two remaining icons in the disk image into position. You're going to have to eyeball it a bit, but after some trial and error, you should be able to get the icons into a nice alignment. One last thing, let's rename our applications alias to just plain old applications. Just like any other file, you can rename the alias by selecting it, pressing enter, making the changes, and then pressing enter one last time. Okay, we're all set. Once you're satisfied with the way everything looks, we can head back to the disk utility one last time. With the Hello World image selected in the disk utility sidebar, I'm then going to move back up to the menu bar, press images, and then convert. Here we're given the option to save the disk image again. This time, however, we're going to choose read only as the image format. I'll do that, and then press save. After it's finished processing for a bit, we're all set. You've just created a retina-ready, read-only, DMG application installer. When users mount your disk image, they'll see the background image you created, and they won't have to worry about accidentally deleting the source application file, as the disk image really is read-only. So that's it. I'm Alex Rain with Tots Plus. Enjoy!